Hola amigos, ¿qué tal estáis? I'm sure you have learned how to respond to that question, right? Muy bien, very good. And if you were to ask the same question the other person, you would say, ¿cómo estás tú? o ¿cómo está usted? I'm fine, yo también estoy muy bien. I hope you're enjoying learning Spanish. You have already learned a lot of verbs to say many expressions in the language and gaining a lot of confidence, right? Yes, and here we come with more in this chapter. In the last chapter, we have learned many things, isn't it? We have learned how to talk about our likes, dislikes, about how to express our opinions in a simple manner or to agree or disagree with somebody or someone else's opinions. We have also learned how to speak about weather like today is a pleasant day. Hace un buen tiempo hoy. How to describe a monument, a place, etc. So we have basically learned several things in a simple manner in Spanish so far. Talking of places, I'll ask you a question. ¿Cuál es tu lugar favorito? ¿Cuál es tu lugar favorito? ¿Cuál es which or what is lugar? Lugar is place. Favorito, favorito, favorite. Which is your favorite place or what is your favorite place? William, ¿cuál es tu lugar favorito? Londres. Ok, Londres. Londres, London. Clara, tú, dime, dime, tell me, ¿cuál es tu lugar favorito? Vale, Australia, Australia. Tahira, tú, you, tell me. And Tahira likes Morocco, is her favorite place. Muy bien. Do you know what is my favorite place? Mi lugar favorito es mi casa. Mi casa, my home or my house. Don't we all love our homes? However, wherever they might be, we love them. Yes. A home is where we relax, we enjoy, we cry, we smile, we laugh. We are more at ease, isn't it? Since it forms such an important part of our lives, we surely must learn how to talk about it, describe it, describe the locality we live in, etc. Now, how would I say I like my house? You have learned the verb gustar, right? Me gusta mi casa. I know that you know very well now the verb gustar. Me gusta mi casa. ¿Te gusta tu casa? Sí, sí. ¿Cómo no? Of course. We like our houses. In the last chapter, yes, we must remember that we used gustar based on the number of the object that we like. In a very simple term, if I like a book, I say, me gusta el libro. And if I like ice creams, I say, me gustan los helados. Me gusta mi casa in the same manner. And before we do that, we must learn how to make descriptions in general. G describe anything as such. So, we use the verb ser. And you know the verb ser very well, mainly to describe a person. Like, Juan es alto. Or an object, la casa es grande or La mesa es redonda. La mesa es 
redonda the table is round or a place a place nueva delhi es una ciudad grande nueva delhi es una ciudad grande new delhi is a big city so you have seen that is used to describe people like mi primo es alto mi primo my cousin is tall or juan es alto las flores son bonitas flores flowers are beautiful bonitas beautiful tu colegio es pequeño tu colegio your school colegio is equal to school in spanish your school is small and we will use more of the verb ser while describing the house so please revise the verb ser and its conjugations now let's come back to mi casa or my house first of all let's learn how to speak about the various kinds of houses or residences juan tu vives en una casa o en un piso juan tu vives vives is from the verb vivir to live vives en una casa o en un piso yes i'm asking you if you live in a flat or an independent house you guessed it right piso is flat and casa is a house so juan tu vives en un piso sí muy bien yes sara tú dónde vives ah en una casa muy bien oh you live in a house very well sara tú dónde vives en una casa taira y tú Ah, tú vives en un chalet. Tú vives en un chalet. Chalet is a bungalow or a villa. Y tu chalet tiene un jardín. Tu chalet tiene un jardín. Does it have a garden? Sí, sí. Qué bien. Qué bien, qué bien. We have learned this. How nice. You got it, right, students? A compañera, a compañera Tahira lives in a bungalow and it has a garden too. Qué bien. Vale. Now we have learned that we use the verbs said to describe and we have also learned a little bit about various kinds of housing in Spanish and we should see now what is there in a house generally what are the different parts in a house exactly when i say is here i'm talking about the existence of something in spanish we use the expression i remember i to talk about the existence i un libro sobre la mesa i un libro there is a book on the table sobre sobre is the preposition on la mesa on the table hay un libro sobre la mesa hay tres libros sobre la mesa hay tres you have also learned the numbers right hay tres libros three books on the table in the previous lessons you have learned that i is used both with singular and with plural now talking about house There's a very famous saying, mi casa es tu casa. Yes, friends. It's a famous Spanish saying. It means my house is your house. We say it when we invite someone to our house and want them to feel comfortable it is telling the other person 
that she or he should consider um, our place as their place or theirs you know mi casa es tu casa i'll first tell you about the rooms in my house for example mi casa tiene cinco habitaciones cinco habitaciones when we talk of houses and parts or the spaces within a house we talk of different rooms right so rooms habitaciones mi casa my house tiene the verb tener has cinco habitaciones anita cuántas habitaciones hay en tu casa cuántas habitaciones hay en tu casa vale hay cuatro habitaciones en tu casa hay un salón en mi casa there's a salón salón is a living room in in the house hay tres dormitorios tres dormitorios you remember the verb dormir dormir is to sleep so dormitorios bedrooms right y una cocina 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 is the from the verb cocinar is to cook so cocina una cocina is a kitchen hay tres dormitorios y una cocina y un salón tres dormitorios una cocina y un salón three bedrooms a kitchen and a living room juan cuántos dormitorios hay en tu piso muy bien hay dos dormitorios en el piso de juan do you all sing in the bathrooms i do hay tres cuartos de baño en mi casa hay tres cuartos de baño en mi casa yes se dice cuarto de baño or a bathroom while doing reflexive verbs you have learned to say me baño i take bath so baño cuarto de baño is a bathroom in spanish en español a quien le gusta cocinar a quien le gusta cocinar charles taira y juan muy bien chicos yo también a mí me gusta cocinar hay una cocina grande en mi casa hay una cocina grande cocina grande grande big una cocina grande there's a big kitchen in my house me gusta cocinar en mi cocina grande y moderna grande y moderna you have these two adjectives qualifying the kitchen mi cocina es grande y moderna moderna modern big and modern i like to cook in my modern and big kitchen now let's look at this photograph that my friend corke has sent me of his house and let's see if we can describe his house as we can see su casa tiene dos plantas dos plantas plantas flores two flores en la planta baja baja is the ground floor or the lower floor hay un salón hay un salón hay un salón there's a drawing room or a living room una cocina y un estudio un estudio estudio is you have done the verb estudiar is to study so estudio 
is a study room. So, en la planta baja, in the ground floor or in the lower floor, hay un salón, una cocina y un estudio. There's a study room. En la primera planta, primera, first. Primera planta, hay tres dormitorios con tres balcones. Balcón, dormitorios con balcones. Dormitorios con, con, with. Balconies. Now, if you say without balconies, sin balcones. Con balcones, sin balcones. Hay tres dormitorios con tres balcones. That is, in the first floor, there are tres dormitorios, tres balcones. Los balcones dan a un patio pequeño. Los balcones dan a un patio pequeño. The balconies look out onto a small patio. Patio is a backyard. The balconies open onto or look out onto a small patio. We must here learn this expression dar a. Dar a, when we use this expression in the context of a house, it means to look out onto, to open onto. La ventana da a la playa. La ventana, ventana is window. The window looks out onto the beach. La playa is the beach. La habitación de Diego da a un parque. La habitación de Diego, the Diego's room, looks out onto a park. When we are describing a house, we also talk about its size. That is, if it's big or small or etc. Juan, ¿cómo es tu casa? ¿Grande o pequeña? Juan dice que su casa es pequeña. Juan says that his house is small. Sara, ¿y tu casa? Vale, tu casa es bastante grande. Bastante grande. Mi casa Ni es grande ni pequeña. Mi casa. Ni es grande ni pequeña. Ni grande ni pequeña. Neither big nor small. Tahira. ¿Y tu casa? Ah, vale. Tu casa es muy, muy, muy grande. ¿Cómo se dice? Muy, muy, muy grande. En español, pues, we say, mi casa es grandísima, grandísima. Now, what is this grandísima? Grandísima is the superlative of the adjective grande. I'll help you now to understand and learn how to form the superlative versions of the adjectives. As we all know, an adjective is a word that describes a noun, that is a person, an object or a place. El libro es bueno, the book is good, la chica es alta, Paris es bonita. As we observe, the adjectives change according to the gender and number of the noun. To give you an example, bueno Buena, buenos, buenas, etc. I'll make a brief mention about the comparatives before going on to the superlatives. In Spanish, the comparative is made by simply adding the word mas. 
before the adjective and K after it. Juan es más alto que Carlos. John is taller than Carlos. Este dormitorio es más grande que los otros. This bedroom is bigger than the others. That's it. It's very simple. We'll now come back to the superlatives. In Spanish, the superlatives are formed by adding ismo or isima. Isimo or isima to the adjective depending on the gender. Or sometimes if it's plural, it is isimos or isimas. But we do have to take care of that. If an adjective ends with a consonant, we simply add isimo to it. That is, facil is easy. So, you will make it facilissimo or facilissima. Difícil, difficult is something very, very difficult would be difficilissimo or difficilissima. The same in plural would be facilissimos, facilissimas, difficilissimos, difficilissimas. Now, if the word ends in a vowel, we have to omit or remove the vowel and add the isimo or isima. Since the adjective pequeño ends with a vowel, we remove the vowel and add isimo. Thus, it becomes pequeñísimo. So, you remove the o and add isimo or isima. Pequeñísimo, bonitísimo, etc. The same in plural would be pequeñísimos, pequeñísimas, bonitísimos, bonitísimas. Por ejemplo, mi coche es pequeñísimo. If you have a small car, you would say my car is very, very, very small, pequeñísimo. Let's look at some more examples to understand the superlatives better. Esta bolsa es cara. Cara, caro, you know it's expensive. Bolsa is bag. Este bolso es carísimo. Este bolso es carísimo. The bag is most expensive. Mi hermano es alto. My brother is tall. Mi primo es altísimo. El océano atlántico es grande. The Atlantic Ocean is big. El océano pacífico es grandísimo. The Pacific Ocean is the biggest. La gramática es difícil o fácil. If you want to say difficult, it would be difícil or easy. You would say fácil. La pronunciación es facilísima. So, this is how the superlatives go on. Mi barrio es grande. Mi barrio, my locality, my neighborhood is big. El barrio de mi amigo es grandísimo, es grandísimo, is very big. All right, amigos, now I'm sure we all have a better understanding of the superlatives and how they are formed. Talking about barrio, let's now try and describe our casas and barrios. By the way, this is how my friend Corke described his house and his barrio. Remember, you saw a picture of his house earlier. Corke says, mi casa tiene dos plantas, 
en la planta baja hay un salón, un comedor. Now you have seen what's a salon, what's a cocina, what are dormitorios. Now comedor is where comemos, where we eat, is dining hall. Una cocina grande, un cuarto de baño, en la planta baja, en la planta baja, in the ground floor. En la primera planta hay dos dormitorios, un estudio y una terraza, a terrace. Hay un pequeño jardín en la terraza, hay un pequeño jardín en la terraza. La terraza da a un parque grande. Hay dos balcones pequeños. In the first floor or the floor above, there are three bedrooms, a study and a terrace. There is a small garden on the terrace. The terrace looks onto a big park. Talking about the neighborhood, in which he lives, he says, yo vivo en el centro de la ciudad. Yo vivo en el centro de la ciudad. Centro, center of the city, in the heart of the city. Mi barrio es bastante grande y moderno, pero es muy ruidoso. Ruidoso is noisy. I live in the center. So you can say, since it's heart of the city, Barrio es ruidoso. The barrio is very noisy. En mi barrio hay un cine, un cine, cine, theater, unos restaurantes y bares, un supermercado y un parque grande, un parque grande. In my neighborhood there's a movie theater. Now, teatro in Spanish is theater where they stage plays. Cine in Indian context is theater where we watch movies. Some restaurants and bars. Now, bar is a very popular outing space in Spanish culture. Bar is where they serve tea, coffee, liquor, everything. Unos bares y restaurantes. A supermercado, supermarket, big park. También hay una piscina. Hay una piscina. Piscina is a swimming pool. Casa con piscina. Casa sin piscina. House with swimming pool. House without a swimming pool. También hay una piscina en el parque. There's a swimming pool in the park. Hay un hospital público en mi barrio. There's a government hospital, public hospital in my neighborhood. A unos dos kilómetros de mi casa hay una estación de metro. There's a metro station around two kilometers. Juan Charles Taira, ¿os gusta la casa de Jorge? ¿Os gusta? Do you like Jorge's house? Sí, sí, es muy bonita, ¿no? Yes, it's very beautiful, isn't it? There's, hay un salón, dormitorios, cocina, estudio, balcones, terraza, jardín. Hay una piscina en su casa. Is there a pool in his house? No, no, no. La piscina está en su barrio, en el jardín. The swimming pool is in his locality. It's in the garden. And in his barrio, well, there's a cine, restaurantes, bares, supermercado, parque, piscina, hospital, etc. His house, his casa, is very close to a metro station. Vale, chicos y chicas, amigos, with this 
we come to an end of our lesson today on how to describe our house and the locality. I hope you enjoyed learning this lesson and look forward to learning more. Practice the vocabulary and the structures to describe the house, your house, your locality. You can start describing your house with the vocabulary given more in the next sessions. Take care. Adios. Hasta luego. Chao.